All right, today we're going to walk through a full project start to finish. Recently, I made a bunch of coasters for some family friends, and what I used was a split monogram. So you see these all over the place. Um, you'll see where a big fancy scroll work over a an initial, a letter C, a letter A, a letter S, um, and then a name split down the middle of it. So today we're going to take a look at how to do that in Lightburn, and I'm going to walk you through uh, some features of Lightburn, such as using an art library and, you know, how to configure. Um, in my case, I'm going to be doing this on a, on a Galvo fiber laser, and uh, I will run this through and I'll show you the, uh, the laser working on the coaster and ultimately um, a finished product. So starting out, I've got Lightburn open here. And one of the things I want to do is first get my art library going. So if you don't have the art library turned on, you can come up here to an empty space, right click and turn on art library. Now by default, it's going to open up and it's going to put it somewhere docked over here, roughly like that. And that's fine, depending on your workspace area. Uh, I think for the purpose of this video, I'll go ahead and leave it over there since I'm working with a relatively small workspace for my Galvo. Uh, I've only got 110 by 110 to work with. So we'll leave the library up over here. Um, but what I've got is, in my case, I've got a an art library for monograms, uh, which has all of my alphabet letters in there. And I'll show you how you can create these. So first I want to do is create a new library, and it's going to come up and it's going to ask me for a file path. So in my case, we are... Um, in an art libraries folder, and I'm just going to call this a sample video library uh, because it's going to contain stuff I already have. And so that will give you a library over here on the left that you can load or unload as necessary. So when you want to reload it, you come back in here, you just select it, and it loads it again. So now to populate the library, you've got to have SVGs in place. So let me find my... SVG folder with all of my okay so I've got a folder here with a bunch of split monogram uh, letters that I purchased off of Etsy uh, that would cost me about two dollars and it saved me the hassle of having to go through and either create them myself or uh, find ones that I like for all 26 letters and trace them so I just went ahead and purchased them it was convenient uh, quick and easy and so let's take a look. And if I wanted to bring in, let's say, the letter S. So here's your letter S. Um, it's already split for me. It's got the nice scroll work in it. And I want to add this to my art library. So I can click this, the SVG. And if I had a bunch of stuff on the screen, um, it wouldn't matter. As long as I only click the one I want. And I'm going to say, um, let me get rid of these. Click the one I want. And I'm going to say, import graphic from project. And so what that's going to do is it's in, going to import the selected graphic and you'll give it a name. And in my case, I give them a, a letter S and then, for example, one. So if I've got multiple series, I can have S1, S2, S3, uh, different scroll work, different designs, whatever. And when I save that, you'll see it adds it to my art library over here. So I did that for all 26 letters, and if I want any particular thing, I can just drag it out. I can click the Add Graphic to Project button, whatever, but they're all there at my fingertips. It saves me from having to go dig through folders on my computer, um, and it stores them in library files that you can share across you know, different instances of Lightburn, or you know, if I've got my design computer, which I'm on now, versus the computer that runs my laser. Um, it shares all of those libraries back and forth between the two of them. So without the need to move my SVGs all over the place. All right, so let's start with a letter S. We're going to add that to the project. And so I've got my basic template in place. Um, I do want to do a little cleanup here real quick. So let me ungroup this. And I don't like this little piece here. So I'm actually going to get rid of that. Okay. So that was just an, an artifact in the letter. And again, you know, these are a purchased letter pack and you can manipulate them. You can come in here and do note editing, um, whatever you want to do. Uh, let me regroup that. Okay. So now next step is I want to add 
some text. So I'll grab my text tool, drop it on the screen, and let's see. I'm gonna go subscribe. Because you should be subscribed to my channel. Um, all right, so I happen to like some of the Sentry fonts for this. They're a good fit with the scroll work that I have, but you know, definitely scroll through uh, your installed fonts and see what looks right to you. Um, that's not bad. Uh, so I, I've got a few that I'll bounce back and forth between, but in this particular case, I happen to like that Century uh, school book. So from here, what I'm actually going to do, let me turn my art library, or actually, let me dock my art library back down here. Okay. So I got my art library docked for later. All right. So now I'm going to come in and spend some time getting my text lined up where I want it. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to squish it. And it's, it seems to be okay as long as you're not dealing with really long words. Um, squishing these down to fit and then kind of stretching them so that they're overlapping slightly tends to look fine. Um, I've done short names, I've done long names, and you know it, it's more about the artistic uh, version of getting the word in there rather than the literal of the font uh, proportions. So these tend to look really good um, even when you kind of squish them down and stretch them out a little bit. And so what I did is you'll see that I made it so that my letters slightly overlap uh, the scroll work or slightly overlap the bars on the top and bottom. And I want to make sure everything has just a little bit of overlap there, which looks like it does. Okay. And then I'm going to select all, so control A, and I'm going to come over here to my Boolean operators and I'm going to select union. So this is going to union all of that together. And you'll see that everything should now flow from one to the other with no lines in between. Ah, okay, so that E's, um, I want to fix that E a little bit. So let me undo that. And I want to bring this in just a touch. Okay. And then same with the S. There. All right. I think that works. Yep. Okay. So again, control A and union those. All right. That's better. All right. So there's the basic layout. Now from here, it's just a matter of configuring how you want it to look. So right now it's just on a line layer. So if I look at that, it's just going to do a trace. I actually want this to be a fill, so I'm going to select one of my fill layers. Actually, I've got to select this and put it on one of my fill layers, okay? Um, so that should give me that, which looks really nice. And then I'm going to actually go one step further, is I'm going to duplicate this, so Control D. Um, actually, I could do this with sublayers. So this is where I'm going to come in here and I'm going to do a sublayer. And the sublayer is going to be um, just a line traced around it. So in this case, 666, power 100, frequency, what's my frequency? 25. And one pass is fine. And okay. That should do it. Okay, so now what it's going to do is it's going to fill the entire image and then it's going to come through and do a cleanup pass around all of the borders. All right, so now let's take a look. If I back this up a little bit, let that play through. And then I should see it do, yep, okay. So it does, a, it does a quick trace around everything. All right, so that should be it. The only other thing I wanna do is I know for a four inch coaster, I tend to like somewhere in the neighborhood of 2.75 for the size. 
And then all things being equal, this is saying it's going to be about a six minute burn time, um, which is about average. They're usually five to anywhere from five to seven minutes, depending on how complicated they are at the settings that I use. Uh, I can obviously go faster. Uh, I can I can engrave faster, um, but I'm already at max power and I want to take a good marking on the slate. Um, so I found that this is a good setting. And actually, I pulled that out of a material library that was provided to me um, when I purchased the laser. Um, I actually purchased this laser secondhand, and they provided me with a, a fairly decent material library, uh, specifically for light burn for this machine. So if you look at you know the settings I pulled, um, you know, it's got my speed, my power, my frequency. The only thing I changed is I changed the, the pattern. I went from the, the, um, cross hatch, um, and I turned on more of the snake style where it'll go back and forth by directional. Um, and, um, yeah, uh, point oh one for the interval. Yeah. Okay. So that looks good. Um, yeah, so that should do it. Actually, I do want to, yeah, I'll play with this a little bit more when I get it to the other machine. Uh, so for now, we're going to save this. And I'm going to save this in my coasters as subscribe video coaster. All right. And then uh, I'll see you over at the laser. You say I make you nervous, a tragedy, I'm a beautiful disaster, a reckoning, you wonder how I got this way. You think I'm someone to be saved, someone to clean up and tame, oh, some things never change, never change. You think I would look pretty on your arm Once you cover up my bruises and battle scars But it always ends the same Can't bear the things I've had to face Got you crying on your knees in pain Oh, some things never change, never change oh. You break your back to make me feel it Stop asking for forgiveness Cause you should know Only fools dread with the angels Fear to go But you keep trying to get too close Save myself by turning into stone So save your judgment Cause you just don't know But some things never change Alright, so there you had it From start to finish We created a nice split monogram Put it on a slate coaster and now for a little bonus tip, I'm going to show you Photo Room. And Photo Room is one of the coolest things out right now for marketing your products if you're intending to sell them. So we're going to go ahead and log in. It is subscription based. And I took a picture of the coaster in my light box. And we're going to bring it in. And we're going to do an instant background. So let's see. We want to do... Let's... Um, Let's see what it prompts us with here. Sometimes its suggestions are good, sometimes not so much. Okay, so these aren't far off. So let's see, if I come in here, and I want to edit this, I want to, want to say, um, coaster design on it. Let's see, and I don't want a light brown wall in the background. I want a drink on the table next to it and a window in the background. Let's see what that does. So it didn't hit the window in the background part. I was looking to give a little pop of light behind there. 
it's not too bad. How about on a, let's see, a square slate coaster with design on it on a dark wooden table. Ooh, I like that. Okay, we're getting closer. So that's what I was after. That window in the background gives it that nice pop of light behind it. Uh, that's not too far off. Let's generate a couple more here. And so Photo Room is all about being able to find the right prompt. And that's not bad. I like that. Let's see. Oh, that's really close. But you can see just by playing around the different results you can get for marketing your coasters uh, or marketing anything for that matter. If you don't have a full, this one looks a little dark. If you don't have a full photo studio uh, at your disposal, as long as you can get a nice clean background on it, um, you know, take a picture outside uh somewhere where there's not lots of nice light it will um be able to remove that background for you and apply your product into a completely new setting all right so there you go so we'll go with that download that give me a nice png uh, sure There you go. So if I open that up, open up the photo room version, you can see the before and after. Started out with that, ended up with that. And you can clip that a little bit and stage it up if you're putting it on your Instagram, crop it to a one to one. Um, you know, do whatever you need to do. But at that point, uh, done. You've got a finished product ready to hit your Etsy shop whenever you are ready to make some money. So there you go. A uh, little bit of light burn, a little bit of photo room, a uh, little bit of a work in progress uh, capture watching the laser do its thing. Um, that's it for now. So until next time, thanks for watching.